Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. Come inside Movie Maniacs as we take a look at the film 25 years in the making. Kind of. We're talking about the sequel to Samurai Cop, aptly named a Samurai Cop 2, brought to us by Gregory Hatanaka, who actually directed a film that we reviewed on our channel a while ago called Mad Cowgirl. Now, in this story, it is 25 years later. We find that Joe Marshall and Frank Washington, the two partners from the first Samurai Cop, have had a falling out. Joe suffered a major tragedy and it kind of put him at ends, and they've kind of grown apart. Well, Frank Washington is forced to track down his old partner, Joe, and they're forced to pair up to take on the Yakuza once again. There's a Yakuza clan war going on and these two gentlemen come out and go and fight the Yakuza clan members to try to prevent them from setting their city on fire or from one clan growing in complete power. But they have new villains as well as old standing in their way and we see how they karate chop, sword swipe, and shoot their way through the Yakuza clans. Samurai Cop 2 is a perfect ballet of nostalgia exploitation, modern storytelling, and fun. Uh, it really is. I had a blast with this. It was great because I watched this right after I watched the original. And let me tell you, this is a natural sequel. Felt like a natural sequel. Not just because they got a good chunk of the original cast back, which was surprising. Matthew uh, Curtis comes back as the uh, uh, legendary samurai cop. And he looks almost exactly the same. Got the hair, got the moves. Uh, still a ladies man. Loved that character that they have uh, with him and loved his performance in here. In fact, I think he's a better actor in this one than he was in the first one. Delivers his lines a lot better and he's just... He handles this character that has matured and is just fun seeing Joe Marshall back kicking ass. Kicking ass next to him is Frank Washington, once again played by Mark Frazier, who doesn't really look that different at all from uh, 25 years ago as well. And he falls right back into this character. Felt like a natural uh, aged version of the character. Played very well. Still has that chemistry between these two characters and he's having a blast again as well. And I'm so glad they got the original two characters back. But they also got some other ones in here. We've got Cranston uh, Komuro in here who played Fujiyama in the original. Here he plays Fuji Fujiyama. Remember the same clan? And I loved seeing him come back in here and having fun. Uh, Melissa Moore comes back as the Peggy character. Uh, there's just a whole group of, wow, I reckon him from the first film. Unfortunately, Robert Zadar isn't back, but they do pay homage to Mr. Zadar by naming one of the characters after him and even using some footage from the original in this film. So it was great to show them, see them show some respect there. But you get new faces as well. Joe Estevez, the fantastically talented independent film star Joe Estevez is in here as their captain, playing it up beautifully, just like you would expect the captain to in a samurai cop film. You got Bai Ling in here playing a very deadly and uh, sexually active uh, character uh, assassin here, a VP of uh, the clan, if you will. Uh, and you've got a number of uh, adult film stars in here who some of them put on some fantastic performances. Actually, I really like the performance by Caden Cross in this movie. Uh, her Melina character, as well as she plays uh, Jennifer for some of the flashback scenes, she does very well in here. Uh, great chemistry with her and uh, Matthew, and really enjoyed the scenes they were in together, and you could tell she was taking this role seriously and having fun. All the actresses and actors in here were having a lot of fun. You still got your exploitation elements in here as well. You got your gratuitous nudity, excessive violence with, once again, well choreographed action scenes that felt just a natural style that we saw in Samurai Cop is once again in here. They captured the essence, the heart. What made Samurai Cop a cult classic? They brought that in here, but they did it respectfully. Some films don't do that, but this one does that successfully, and I commend Gregory Hatanaka for taking care in this film for something that could have easily been a toss-off sequel. You could tell he tried to make a serious sequel, and I think they accomplishes that here. And also look for Tommy Wiseau, of course, in here, the, the character, the man who's the character himself playing Linton in here. Uh, it was just funny seeing him on screen. Now, the story does get a little choppy at bits, but 
just like the first one. You kind of jump ahead, jump around a little bit. Got to pay attention. There's a lot of characters in here. Uh, but if you're a fan of the first one, a fan of exploitation film, fan of independent cinema, you'll be a fan of this to be sure. It's got a higher budget than the original, I could tell. The sets look fantastic. The production quality was fantastic. And the story was interesting as well, though a bit chaotic. But it is also a kinetic film. So check it out, please. If you have seen Samurai Cop 2, leave your comments down below. I highly recommend it to all of those fans out there. Great natural uh, sequel to the original that does respect to all the characters involved and still has a lot of fun. That'll about do it here for us at the Final Cut. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, till next time, keep that ticket stub.